What's up, everybody, and welcome to Poker Vlog Episode 2 as we kick off this trip across country, driving three days to Las Vegas, Nevada, flying all the way back to the East Coast to Philadelphia, and hanging out with my good friends Ben on Drew and John Party for a 10-day cross-country RV tour back to the WSOP. There is going to be a ton of content. Make sure you're following all three of us. Links down in the description and make sure you are subscribed to this channel because there's just going to be content galore over this next 13 days and throughout the World Series of Poker as we also chase some incredible dreams out there. Day one of this journey that takes us to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And after a dinner with a favorite friend of mine and just an all around amazing person, my Cation, we take his recommendation and we head over to the River Spirits Casino in Tulsa to play some one to no limit hold'em. We get out to a hot start right out of the gate and hand number two in the button. We're dealt the Cowboys Pocket Kings. We've got three limpers in front. I still haven't learned how these cash games work. I isolate to $20 thinking that's gonna get me heads up with somebody, but we get not one, not two, but three callers as we go to the flop. The flop is 965 two tone, not the best flop for us, obviously. In a lot of multi way pots, most of our C bets are going to be on the smaller side. I like to go about $28 here around quarter pot, kind of as a feeler bet, see where we're at. We do get two folds, one call. The turn is a jack, an offsuit jack pretty good card for us. It makes it a little bit difficult to go for a really big value here. It's going to be a scare card for a lot of the one pair hands our opponents can have. Obviously, they're probably not still going anywhere with a lot of their uh, combo draws, and they're definitely not going anywhere with any hands that beat us. So I think we're still going to go pretty small here. I decided to go $35 on the turn. The river is an offsuit deuce. We run out fairly clean. I now bet $50 on the river. Villain folds, we rake our first pot of the night and things are feeling good. A couple orbits later, we're in the big blind. We pick up pocket sixes, under the gun, raises to $10. The button calls. With the button calling, I think we need to come along here. Under the gun, obviously, is still gonna have a strong range, but we're also super deep effective. We do make the call. The flop comes 875. This isn't a spot that I can put into Range Trainer Pro, so I'm not entirely sure how we lean towards leading here versus checking. Uh, if we think our opponents are going to check and not see bet a lot, then we want to lead more. If we think that they're going to see bet a really strong range, obviously it's a great check raise candidate. I lean towards checking back as the player to my left has been decently aggressive and has c-bet a lot of his flops in the couple of orbits we've been with him. Unfortunately, it does check around. The turn is an offsuit king. I check the end of the gun uh, opener now puts a c-bet out of $15. The button folds. I don't love this spot. Um, we do have a decent amount of equity. If he is C betting hands like Ace Queen and Ace Jack, or maybe potentially even Ace 10, then we're in a spot where we are going to have enough equity to call. If he's just C betting over pairs and King X, we're really not in great shape. I do elect to make the call. The river is a brick, and we check again. Our opponent bets $25, and we give up. Now comes one of the more interesting hands of the night. Super interested in seeing what my friends say about this hand who have a little bit more experience in cash. Folds around to us in middle position. We pick up pocket eights, the snowman, we raise to $10. And the villain director to our left, who's been fairly active, three bets to $25, an undersized 2.5X. It folds around back to us. We're 200 big blinds effective here, so I really don't like folding. At the same time, uh, his range should be pretty strong, so I'm not in love with calling either. I'm going to not respect myself in the morning if I fold here, so I do make the call with the extra $15. The flop comes queen 5-4. We check. Our opponent fires $20 into the pot. And again, I just kind of feel gross. Um, 
you know, I think he can definitely have some hands we're still beating. He can have ace king, he can have ace jack, he can have ace 10, but he's also got a fair amount of ace queen. He's got aces and kings. His sizing doesn't really tell us if he's doing this with hands like jacks or tens. I go ahead and decide to peel one. Not really sure about this decision. The turn comes an offsuit seven. And this is a really good leading spot for us. It's a decent card for our range. We've picked up equity and we don't really want our opponent to fire a really, really big bullet here. So I decided to go for a very small lead of $25. This allows us to equity deny our opponent if he does have hands like ace, king, ace, jack, and ace, 10 that are gonna check back. The downside is if he raises us, it's gonna be a lot harder to realize our equity, but the upside is getting to set that price. He does make the call and the river is beautiful. It's an offsuit six. We have a straight now. We can't go for super huge value here because our hand is somewhat face up and we're just not gonna expect him to hero call here for a massive pot. So I go small, $35. Our opponent calls. We flip over the eights. Our opponent mucks. He mutters something about having an overpair. Not entirely sure he had an overpair here based on some future action later in the evening. But regardless of whether they had an overpair or a queen or pocket jacks or tens, uh, we got max value and I'm really looking forward to seeing how my friends who are great at cash view this hand and how they would have played it differently. At this point in the night, we're rocking and rolling. We're up about $150. It's looking like we've got our first win of the bag. And then we look down at pocket aces. Under the gun limps, it folds around to us in middle position. We kick it up to $20. Uh, a short stack in the button makes a call and we go three ways to the flop. The flop comes queen, 10, nine, two tone, not the best flop for us. Under the gun checks. We decide to bet $25, uh, basically the exact amount that the short stack has left in his stack kind of is a little, uh, level to say, Hey, we've got this. Um, the short stack does flick it in, under the gun folds. We go ahead and table hands and the short stack flips over queen jack. So he's got the pair plus the straight draw, not a great spot for us. And sure enough on the turn comes another queen and we're drawing slim to two outs. Uh, the river's a offsuit four and we get our aces cracked. Licking our wounds, we're trying to battle our way back and still get a big win. We get in a spot in the hijack where it folds to us. We have queen jack offsuit. We raise it to $10. The button calls off of about $150 stack. The small blind calls as well. Flop is jack 10, nine rainbow. Checks to us. We put out a happy C bet of $15. Both players call. Turn is a brick. We decide to fire again. We go $25 this time. Uh, we would definitely want to continue denying equity on a two-tone board. And while their calls are a little bit scary, they can still have weaker pairs, weaker combo draws, weaker flush draws. We need to equity deny. At the same time, I don't want to build a massive pot three ways. They do both call again. The river is a brick deuce. So again, a fairly clean run out. The small blind checks to us. I'm debating going for a third barrel here. Uh, but I know that the player and the button has been really tight passive, so I don't feel like he's going to bet here super often. And if he does, we know we're beat. Um, so I just go ahead and elect to check behind here. Um, the button checks, small blind flips over ace queen, no good. And then I look and I see the button grab his cards like he's getting ready to throw them in the muck. So I'm feeling pretty good. I table my queen jack and he looks surprised and flips over pocket kings. Now, there was no ill will involved. It wasn't a slow roll. This was just a gentleman who plays very tight passive and legitimately was thought he was beat, thought he was up against two pair or a straight. Um, but we thought we were gonna rake a really nice pot and now we're down to pretty much even. So we get down to the final orbit and I am desperately trying to book a win. We're sitting at $295 after buying it for $300. And I, all I can hear in my head 
is my great friend, Real Frank Mayo, who's a cash legend saying, don't force the action. And so we get a couple spots in this final orbit. I maybe could have gotten a little bit of a loose open in, but I just decide to play it a status quo. Comes around to my under the gun spot and it's my last hand. It's not looking good for us to book a win. And I look at the dealer and I say, this is gonna be my last hand. The gentleman across the table from me says, can you wait two more minutes? And I'm like, why? And he says, they do a drawing at midnight for $200. I look around the room, I'm like, well, you know, one more orbit's three bucks. There's 50 people in the room. This is gonna be a plus EV thing. Yeah, I'll go ahead and wait. So we're sitting in the big blind. We post our big blind. We get dealt king five suited. There's four limpers. We're just happy to see a flop. Flop comes ace nine five for bottom pair we check it checks around the turn is a king at this point we happily lead ten dollars we get one caller the river is an offsuit queen we bet fifteen dollars we get a caller gentleman tables king nine which is no good against our two pair we rake the pot we do not win the drawing however with that pot we're up 19 dollars on the day i'm not waiting for the rest of this orbit we're gonna book this win we're gonna take our cash and go but we're not done yet there is one thing left to do. We've got a nice $15 free play from the casino since this is our first time here. So we gotta degen it up. So we wrap up our day with a modest $19 winning at one two plus the $20 we won on free play. Walking out with about 40 bucks. Obviously it's not the win we wanted, but it is the win we needed. And the most important thing here is we got some really, really good experience. We got to try some of the adjustments we brought into the game today. And now we're gonna hit the road for Albuquerque, New Mexico, where we'll get some more cash games in. This journey is just getting started. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. So much content coming out through the rest of the year. We appreciate you and we'll see you soon.